this is the third area in written discourse where we want to see whether there is a relationship between language and gender a written written language and this area relates with translation translation is interaction of number 1 author that is the source of the, uh, that is the source of the text and uh, he belongs to the source culture as well after author comes translator and then comes target text and target culture the target text and target culture is the other language and the other culture that is related with it, that language into which you want to translate the original text so translation is interaction of three factors translator then text uh, and uh, the uh, the author the text and the translator okay in other words tra author and translate uh, and the translation it is intervened by the translator translator comes between these two processes translator can add his or her interpretations in the target text target text mean the language in which you want to translate your end product okay for example if you see commentaries are tafsir of the holy quran so now every commentator gives different commentaries of the same ayat of the same surah according to his her own ideas personal background etc etc so the source text is quran the end text the target text is translation into urdu or into english source text is in arabic translator turns it into urdu or any other language okay that is target text but the translator comes between the two and here he she has opportunity to add his her own personal subjective points of view and for this i have given you example of quran because you are very familiar with this here you daily see if you read the translation or tafsir or commentary of quran you will find that no two commentaries of the quran are similar same is the case with translation so he she can also opt this is one a role of the translator as uh, inter uh, he can intervene between the two can mix up his or her own interpretations another thing is that the translator can also opt the role of cultural guide his translation or her translation will tell the reader of the other language what is the culture what are the norms ideas ideologies of the source text are the writer of the source text okay this is how he uh, also performs the role of cultural guide or cultural agent because he presents culture to other readers to to readers of other language okay these days for example uh, you might have uh, uh, seen uh, if not i want to share with you that uh, in europe in many european countries people think that arab culture is conservative and uh, uh, they, these people mistreat women 
So, there is gender difference, etc., discrimination, and there is problem of rights, etc. This is uh, very much a kind of propaganda. You all know this. There is bias uh, against Islam and Islamic values in Europe and Western world. Uh, we all know this. Okay, now what literary people of Arabic world are doing, and that is appreciable, they are writing short stories and other literary genres, other literary texts, and they translate them into English, and their translation goes to European countries, and through their translation, they know what is the real culture, real face of modern day Arabic world. So, this is how the role of cultural agent or cultural guide is performed by a translation. The first role may or may not be positive. The second role is most often positive if there is no hidden agenda. This is a condition. For the role of cultural agent, one thing is essential. Every translator can't do this. That's why I have already uh, put a condition on that. This work can be done only by that person who has deep knowledge of the author of the original source, the background, the spiritual, political, ideological association, affiliation of the author of the original text, and also the knowledge of culture and ideas of the target culture for which the translator is translating the original text. After this knowledge comes command over language and especially the language into which that person is translating. Okay, it is here that your uh, concern with gender is involved. You, why, why you should know the language of the target text or target culture? Because gender systems of both languages and grammar and structure and vocabulary and vo meanings of particular words of both languages may convey different meaning. So, you have to keep in mind while translating how they view gender, what kind of gender terms are available in that language for which you are translating. That is why the old saying, so because of these factors, we can see that in translation, the translator has opportunity to present his her ideas about gender, keeping in view the available gender system. Okay. And he also has opportunity to mix up his her ideas. And that is why never trust on translation, never read translation blindly. There is an old saying that translation is like a beautiful woman, but unfaithful. This is what they think. Doing all this, the translator has to keep in mind the gender choices, as I have already explained. However, translator can follow or deviate from the gender system, as I said, that here too, the translator has option whether he or she commits to the available gender categories in the target language or he or she violates them. His choice or her choice would give different impression, different meanings to the readers of the translation. So, we conclude that translation is also an area where our choice of language and especially our choice of gender system may create our uh, uh, different uh, perception about gender.